Hi, I'm Sandra, and um, welcome to the Shaman's Cave, and happy Resurrection Day. And I'm Renee Barrow, and it is like one of my most exciting times of the year because it's the, the day I quit drinking 32 years ago, and which really shifted my life into a whole new pattern because um, one of it was in actually around today's topics on omens it was an omen i had an omen in my these blackbirds were in my living room this blackbird and i didn't know how it got in and two weeks later to the day uh, my father had a massive stroke speaking of omens and two weeks later my stepfather dropped dead of a heart attack and it was an omen for me because i thought i don't want to die when i'm 52 and so i quit drinking Wow, congratulations, Renee. Mm -hmm. that's, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. I, um, <clears throat> back in the 80s, I was in one of those phases where the universe was like taking a sledgehammer and constantly hitting me on top of the head, you know. <laughs> and I got out of bed one day and I said, <clears throat> would you please stop hitting me over the head with a sledgehammer? would you start to show me signs before <laughs> I went down a bad route that you had to stop me in such a brutal way? <laughs> and, you know, it was one of those magical moments of, please give me signs instead of hitting me so hard. And, um, and then all of a sudden, my life just became it just became one omen after another. And I always got the signs, you know, that started to say, go this way, go that way, back up, you know, you're, you're, you're going the wrong route. And then in the early 1990s, I went to go see uh, a Vedic astrologer who didn't know me at all, but he was really well known. And he was actually the most psychic man I ever met, but he was also the most arrogant person I ever met. <laughs> and he looks at my palm and he says, oh, you're an omenologist. And I said, what? He said, you're, you were born to be an omenologist. He said, you were born to drum. He knew nothing about me. He said, you were born to drum and you're a born omenologist. And I thought, wow, that's so interesting. And, and so omens, ha omens have been just a huge part of my practice. And I know you're excited about talking about omens today too, Renee. <clears throat> yes, um, that reminds me of my first astrology reading when he, he explained to me, I was in my 20s, that this lifetime I was here to be married to spirit. And spirit first, he said. So, you know, you might have partners along the way. He said, but if spirit told you to move over to, you know, east, east, you know, wherever, you would have to pick up and move. And and so I kind of just, I don't know, sometimes you take those things to heart, like you're an omenologist and I'm married to spirit. I guess that was my first omen. I'm, I'm excited, yes, because every time... I find this show very healing for, for me personally each week, and it always sets me on a new, uh, a new direct revelation of something. And so this week, I had omens. Ooh. <laughs> yes. I was dreaming of snakes. Ooh. And, and, and more so than I was dreaming of snakes, I was dreaming of somebody I very rarely dream of who isn't a snake, um, but there was... I think they were there to, to keep me protected at some level because what was really pronounced in the one dream was um, the, the, the wood, the woodwork, the woodwork. It was like old, um, exposed old studs showing and snakes curled up along the way. And, um, and I, was in a, I was in a work situation where I was getting a lot of pushback. And so it gave me this thought like, okay, when when we get omens or when we get signs like this and maybe you since you're the omenologist can help us with this is like you know who how did we how did i find the snake in the grass type of thing and and so tell us how do how do we start to interpret those omens well first of all um we are nature and you know we're part of this incredible web of life and one of the sad things about humans right now on the planet is that um, we've disconnected from nature. 
But nature is always talking to us. Nature is always talking back to us all the time. And we're just blind. We, we've covered our eyes and ears and everything to only what, what does the media give us? What do we get through the computer? What do we get through Facebook? Without realizing nature is saying, hey, I'm your friend, I'm your ally, and I can help you. And so, you know, when you start out on a, a walk or, or you have a dream, usually there's something working through you. You know, there's something going on inside of you, something that's being worked on and worked through. And nature responds to that. And so you're taking a walk and, and um, you know, you're thinking about making a change in your life and boom, all of a sudden there's this perfect heart-shaped rock right in front of you. Or for me, actually, you're going to like this, Renee, my uh, strongest omen and, and the being I trust the absolute most for trusting my omens, never questioning, is the wind. <laughs> Uh, if I'm taking a walk and I'm thinking about something, a class or um, trying to make a decision or whatever, if there's the wind is just still, I mean, absolute stillness, I know it's a no. <laughs> um, if the wind comes up, that gentle breeze, it's absolutely still. There's no wind anywhere. <clears throat> I'm thinking about something. The wind just gently comes up moves my hair really gently, it's a yes, you know, and I trust it a thousand percent of the time. And it's the same thing in dreams. Um, our psyche starts to connect with nature in our dreams, and our dreams start to bring us these uh, beings and signs of wow, this is a big initiation for you. You know, snake is a big initiation. It's, a you know, letting go of the old and, you know, snake being the feminine and, you know, so grounded to the earth. I mean, there's so many ways to read snake in a dream and as an omen. And um, it, it's, it's opening up to the magic of nature because nature is always speaking to us, whether a rainbow shows itself in the sky or that there's that little drizzle that comes down out of the blue. You know, in shamanism, rain is seen as a blessing. It's, it's a yes to what you're, you're thinking about while you're walking. And so um, it's about opening up to the magic of nature and to the connection of nature and how nature is trying to reach out to you and speak to you by um, showing up at the appropriate times. I love that. And in uh, the Quechua tradition, if, if it rains during your wedding, it's a true blessing, you know, that like that's like that's the, the best is if you get some rain. And, you know, and most of us in this culture, it's like, oh, my God, I'm going to my wedding is going to be rained out. Oh, speaking of omens, last night, Sandra, I was turning on Netflix and, you know, I just on my wind walk and I had a reverse kind of an omen. Many years ago, I was on a, a tour in Peru and the shaman said to me, oh, what? he was asking me about my, my mountain, my little mountain. And I thought he was pointing out the La Rana, the mountain there in Peru that was, you know, the, the connected mountain. Last night I was walking after this experience and all of a sudden I realized that I've been living at the base of the same little hill, you know, that little Eisenhower Hill for 20 years. And mm -hmm. I saw like, wow, this is the mountain he was talking about, you know, not their mountain, my mountain. And, and so I was like, well, that's kind of an interesting omen. So I come home and I turn on Netflix and all of a sudden there's an advertising for a new show called Good omens. <laughs> and I have a friend, Laurie, who's always saying, you know, you get your omens from the TV as well, or flip to the radio. The first song that comes on can be an omen for you as well. So, you know, you could look for them in nature, but you can look for them everywhere. Well, you know what I tell people, and I wrote a, a really wonderful chapter on how to work with omens in my book, Walking in Light. I, I've never promoted on the show before, but this is a great book and there's a chapter. 
And one of the things I wrote about is that magic when you're standing on line at the bank, you know, and all of a sudden a person turns around to you and just happens to say, say something to you, which is the answer you've been looking for for weeks, you know, and that's an omen, you know, or, you know, Netflix and, and, um, and, you know, what you got to Netflix, it comes in, in all kinds of places, you know, the weirdest things, people come up to you and say the weirdest things, and you just want to say to them, do you realize that you just answered the biggest question in my life, and blessings to you for this omen that you gave, but, you know, it's something really interesting is I used to um, write blogs for the Huffington Post and they loved my blogs and I wrote them every month and, you know, they posted every one. And then I sent them how to work with omens. <laughs> never heard from them. <laughs> <laughs> they never posted it and they never contacted me again. And the person who was kind of my intermediary with the Huffington Post said, I think you're done. <laughs> that was your omen. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting in our culture, you know, you start to talk about omens, you start to talk about signs and some parts of our culture, again, that um, are always in control and, you know, nature is not alive and, um, it's it's a sign of witchcraft or a sign of uh, of uh, sorcery in some way, but it's actually life. And how sad that people uh, disconnect themselves and put themselves in a box and don't realize that creation is is communicating with us every second. And if we open our hearts up to it. It's amazing the people who come through, the advertisement that comes through. I got an omen this morning. It's very personal, so I won't talk about it. But somebody emailed me. I was thinking about doing something, and she said, I'm doing this to help me with this issue. And it was like, oh, my God, that was an omen. I've been thinking about doing this for myself, too. You know, So it comes in all kinds of ways. I think that's so true that it's like, what happens is, is, is how do you pay attention to that? Like for a long, long time, I used to know things, but I never really trusted that I knew things. And so a joke between me and a friend came, well, write that down on your white card and keep it in your index. So for years we'd say like, oh, there's a white card on that one because because we don't even, we don't even trust. We, we did a show on trust, but we don't even trust that that that's the right answer. You know, it's like the fireman story, show me a sign and or, you know, God, show me a sign. The fireman comes by, the police come by, you know, you get to heaven. And it was like, where's the sign? I sent the fireman, I sent the police, you know, because we, we think that these divine interventions should be like, you know, so big that, you know, like when I get, I had a kind of an omen this week, Sandra, by winning the, the Nautilus gold. Yeah, okay. congratulations. That's huge. It's really huge. But, you know, some days you sit there like, well, why don't I have more students? And why, you know, why isn't the book selling? And then you get some recognition out of the blue from a place you weren't even expecting it. And then you have to say like, okay, not in my time. You know, not in my vision. You know, it's in, and so often we want to shape the vision so we can't even see the omen through the trees. Yeah, it's true. And I think because we're so, uh, uh, everything in our culture is around the rational and around understanding with our minds. And so we're waiting for the omens to be, um, you know, like the, the story about God, that's a great story. There's so many of them out there. Instead of showing the firemen or showing the policemen, we're waiting for God to actually come to us and start to speak to us in English mm -hmm. and say, uh, this is what you need to do. But nature doesn't work like that. There's divine play going on in the universe. And my God, we've stepped out of divine play because we're waiting <clears throat> for somebody to say to us the words, this is what you're supposed to do. And divine play is how many 
many different pieces of the puzzle. How many signs can I put in front of this person before they realize that the creative forces of the universe is working with you? And, and to me, the creative forces of the universe show us omens as breadcrumbs to follow. Follow the breadcrumbs. I'm showing you the path. Mm -hmm. follow but it's through divine play with the universe not through somebody you know just talking to you so you never have to open up any other part of your of your spiritual being but it's part of life is that dance with the rest of life and so it's really funny because this week for the collective wind spirit card i pulled um Emma Yunette, the Egyptian goddess of obscurity, hidden forces are at play. And that's what you just said. So it's like, okay, there's another omen. So that's the everyday omen. Is that what you talk about in your book? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, if you start to open up to omens, like I did in the 1980s, you know, and it was just through intention. There wasn't a spirit that said, this is how you do it. There wasn't a person who said, this is how you do it. It was opening up my awareness, whether I was walking in a city, you know, you're walking in a city and um, you're thinking about something and it's really, really cloudy. And all of a sudden, magically, the, the clouds start to um, part and the sun, a sunbeam comes down on you. That's an omen. Mm -hmm. That's an omen. You know, so people say, yeah, you know, people live in the country. They have all these nature beings who show up and, but heart rocks are, are, you know, somebody um, in one of my classes showed this amazing heart piece of concrete in, in a city that appeared for her as an omen. And so it's about raising our, our awareness. And when we walk, instead of always keeping our heads down to the ground, as, as I was trained to do growing up in Brooklyn, never look up, you know, always look at your next step. And, um, but once you do pick your head up and start to just notice you, you just start to notice these things like a rain on a wedding, which is a blessing or a rainbow showing or, or clouds parting in the sky or your favorite bird all of a sudden flying right across from you. I mean, I, I um, this is a story for another time, but uh, Santa Fe, who was a, a real teacher for me in, sh in my, sh my, my shamanic work, she threw me out once. She said, enough of you. Go away. <laughs> do some healing. And so I wasn't sure if I could come back. <laughs> and so I, I stood in my room and I said, Santa Fe, are you throwing me out for good? Are you saying goodbye? Or are you saying, go do some healing work on yourself and then come back? And as soon as I said that, my phone rang and uh, the Santa Fe Rape Crisis Center asked me if I would come and teach a class in September. And then I put the phone down and the community college called me and said, would you be willing to teach a Tarot class in September? <laughs> so I got, okay, September, those were two big omens. And then as my car, as I was driving, I just was crossing the border of New Mexico, a golden eagle came and came right up to my windshield, blinding me. I mean, it was amazing. And so that was my huge omen of go, but come back, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, it's amazing how these amazing magical, and, and what it did for me as a person, who I'm very public about this, who suffered from chronic depression throughout my adult life, what it did for me was it showed me the magic of life. And that was healing in itself. When you start to see how the universe is always playing and how nature is talking to you, 
um, it, there's a joy, there's a light that comes in. It, you can't help it, no matter how depressed you are. Mm. You can't help it when nature responds to you by giving you an omen or the right person shows up and says the right thing at the right moment, you know? I love that. I'll have to tell for another day about the omen when I got kicked off, kicked out of Taos and was told to go west. It was like this in this Native American standing in front of me. It was like the most alive apparition I've ever had in my life and blowing the smoke west. And it was like I got booted off the mountain. I didn't know if it was because I hadn't done my healing or or what or that my healing work was really here in the desert. I'm going to go with that one for this story. But we're talking about setting intentions. And so what we thought we would, would end with today was a journey about setting your intention to rediscover what that first omen was for you. Because there's probably some magic that lives in there that you could see where, oh, I maybe I listened or I didn't listen to that omen. And, you know, how has it shaped my omen tracking, my omenology, I love that, ever since. And, and so, Sandra, do you have anything to say about that before we move into the journey of that? No, I'm just so excited about um, the exercise and the journey that you're getting ready to lead us on. I think it's just perfect for us. And it's a resurrection. I called it the resurrection journey because of the timing. And, you know, we didn't plan for this to be on this day. But, you know, wind is stored in caves. So I thought today we'd go into the cave and see what we what omens we can resurrect from our past that have value in our present beautiful um i guess i will rattle and 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 whistle today because because of the production <laughs> but you feel yeah. free to feel free to put yourself on mute sandra and rattle along too okay yeah we just found that we both can't do it at the same time but if i mute myself i can so and that's what i do when she's doing it i mute myself and so, so at home, you know, this is, come with us onto this cave. And I'm gonna call to Amunet first to bring her in because she's, what's, she's gonna reveal to us what's hidden and obscure in our, in our, our seeking of omens. And make yourself comfortable and close your eyes. And as you look around in front of you, there's a cave. What size is the opening? Is it big? Is it small? Can you walk through? Do you have to get on your hands and knees and crawl in on the belly of the mother? Go into the cave. And as you enter the cave, set your intention to better understand omens and how they work in your life. To discover omens that you may have missed, omens that you're yet to discover, so that you can bring more awareness to these special gifts from nature. And as you walk into the cave, it becomes darker. And yet you sense a pool of water. And this reflecting pool is going to be the, the intermediary for us in this journey today. And as you come upon this, this beautiful, sparkling, effervescent water hidden in this cave, this cave of omens, mysteries, unseen forces. Look into the water and see what's reflected back to you. Ask to the water, 
Become a mirror and show me what is the greatest omen of all that I've had in my life that I might have missed, that I might have embraced, that may still reveal itself to me in the future. I'm reminded of the nursery rhyme. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What's the greatest omen of all? Ask, what is it revealing? What has it taught you? What did you miss? Do you remember the first insight, that first omen, that first awakening of nature inside of you? Can you see it reflected to you now in the pool? And now let's ask the water to show us how we will recognize signs in the future. Give us an omen that will teach us that we should be on the lookout for other omens. What is being reflected back to you? What is hidden that will be revealed? And then thank this pool of water for this gift. And as we walk away, walk back towards the opening of the cave, coming back to the room, knowing that this pool of water in this cave is a secret place we can revisit any time to see to receive more information about these omens. And as you walk back out to the light of day, you're greeted by the amulet, the wind, Reminding you that, like Sandra said, the wind is, always has the answers. And welcome. That was such a beautiful experience. And, you know, it, it, <clears throat> it also reminded me of how, um, <clears throat> you know, all the goddess cultures and shamanic cultures used water, you know, as a way to be able to interpret and to read and to work with signs and to work with omens. And so you took us into such an ancient classic way of uh, doing this work. And, and that's really beautiful. It, it was, um, it just felt to me, you know, as we all entered into the shaman's cave together, that the water it just became so alive. Mm -hmm. And um, I could just feel it reaching out to me and, um, and starting to, to show, is starting to just show images in it for me. It was beautiful. That's great. I'm sure I will see those images as I go through the week because they always keep revealing themselves to us. And please share what you receive on the, on the wall of the Shaman's Cave and make sure that you uh, come over to shamanstv.com and, and sign up to receive this in your inbox every week if you, you know, don't want to miss an episode. Because what omens are going to take us places next? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I know it's really wonderful because we're following a flow and um, people are really responding. And so we're, we're really delighted about that. And I also wanted to remind people that 
um, both Renee and I um, will be posting events on uh, Shamans TV that you might want to know about. So, like I just finished teaching a beautiful course on, on nature for the SHIP Network, and it was so beautiful. We're going to keep on going, but we're going to invite um, people in, and I'm going to do um, uh, a session in May to um, invite people into the work if they haven't um, experienced it yet. And we'll post that on Shamans TV. And Renee is always teaching these amazing, uh, brilliant classes. And I I'm just so in awe of Renee's work and her teaching. And those will be posted on events in Shamans TV. So we have our, uh, where you can get information about our next show and what the topic's gonna be. But it's also what Renee and I are doing out in the world that you might be interested in. Absolutely. And and the walking in the light, I have to go order that. Or I think I, I might, might have that. I want to read on the omens and winds of spirit, you know, that definitely you want to, you want to be here with us and, and experience the fullness of all of us. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. There. And I, I said this to Renee when I endorsed her book, and I am so glad that she won this award. I, for me, Winds of Spirit is the best book I've ever read in my wow. life. <laughs> and I said that to her in the endorse, when I was endorsing it, and, and I don't know if you thought I was just making that up. I was entranced. I could not. I, I was entranced. <laughs> um, so I hope that, that you will learn more about Renee's work. I mean, what she brought through is amazing. Uh, just amazing. Yes, luckily I followed those omens as they came through because the, the book is way bigger than anything that I could have come up with on my own limited imagination. And I have a pretty grand imagination. So thank you for joining us and um, we'll see you next week here on The Shaman's Cave. Yeah, have a, have a beautiful week, everybody. And we look forward to hearing from you and seeing you soon. Blessings and happy Resurrection Day or whatever holiday you happen to be um, uh, celebrating or just a beautiful day in spring. Um, have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.